My name is Melissa Skillens, and I'm going to be presenting Audiovisual Archiving and the World of Tomorrow, Explorations into Accreditation and Certification. The author is Emily Staracina. So this article examines the function of accreditation and certification within the traditional archiving profession and aims to uncover the feasibility of implementing accreditation and or certification within the audiovisual archiving profession. Emily defines profession as a body of people and a learned occupation who agree upon and maintain codified values, ethics, and practices within their field. It requires a specialized education and a forum where practices can be debated. Accountability is integral. Emily's argument is that there must exist a standardized education to synthesize these elements of professionalism. Here are some methods of standardizing education. Accreditation is recognition process where a governing body association outlines standards in graduate education and accredits programs that meet established criteria. Certification is when an individual is recognized, possessing defined skills and knowledge to perform required tasks in accordance with minimum standards set by governing bodies or institutions. So the audiovisual archiving professional history from the um, 70s and 80s, uh, there's mostly on-the-job training, um, occasional work so workshops and seminars, limited forums for discussion, and professional literature is scant. In 1998, Philosophy of Audiovisual Archiving Principles and Practices was written by Ray Edmondson. It was the first attempt to codify values and standards and he argued a lack of synthesized standards created a vacuum at the professional's core. In the present day, um, standards are beginning to emerge. These are some of the institutions that have been prominent in the audiovisual field. There is a growing body of literature, um, a growing number of graduate degree programs. However, the audiovisual archiving field lacks a defined set of educational standards. In the traditional archiving field, you have the American Library Association, founded in 1876, the Society of American Archivists, founded in 1936, and both are involved in the education of their professionals. In the audiovisual archiving field, the abundance of professional associations yields a less unified front. Um, there's no association to represent the field as a whole for investigating educational standards. In the traditional archiving field, the Society of American Archivists um, created guidelines for a graduate program in archival studies, qualifying Qualifying graduate programs must follow guidelines, and it's just for graduate school archival programs. The Librarianship Accreditation by the American Library Association has a committee, has a committee on accreditation. The criteria um, is clearly defined in educationally appropriate objectives, maintaining conditions under which achievement is expected, accomplishing those conditions substantially and expected to continue to do so. AOA's accreditation is legitimized externally by the Council for Higher Education Accreditation, the Association of Specialized and Professional Accreditors, and must belong to either agency to be recognized as a professional program. Um, these external agencies provide responsibility and accountability in the profession. SAA is critical on accreditation. There's no difference in salaries. There's a lack of commitment from the community. Um, they perceive it as elitist. There's a refusal to raise their membership dues. Um, and the guidelines are too rigid and they don't reflect reality of funding the program on a small budget. Today, the SAA is not working toward accreditation, but encourages 
the development of archival education programs that comply with guidelines. Certification. Mandatory, it could be mandatory or voluntary. It's administered by a governing body. The holder obtains widely recognized and accepted level of professional competence as outlined by certification agency. Like accreditation, holders have to recertify. Criteria for meeting certification, examinations, years of practical experience, um, master's degree. The more difficult it is to obtain a certification, the more favorably it reflects the profession, which goes back to accountability and prestige in the profession. SAA and accreditation. So they have an interim board for certification that formed the Academy of Certified Archivists, ACA. They issue a CA, Certified Archivist des designation, and there's, a, there's support from the SAA. The criteria for becoming a member of ACA is option one, a master's degree with a concentration in archival administration. Option two, a master's degree plus two years of professional experience. Option three, concerns the previously qualified archivists. Option four, for certification every five years. And, and recent graduate students take an exam, they get provisionally certified, and they have a three-year window to obtain archival work experience. Arguments on the ACA. It's not a major factor affecting the employment in the archiving world or outside of it, but ACA credential is still valuable to employers. Some academics have boycotted certification and have called it a dumbing down of educational requirements. Conclusions. So back to the audiovisual archival profession, Emily argues that it's still a premature state. Um, standardized education, however, plays a key role in strengthening the profession. The external recognition of accredited programs might give it an edge. Going back to Emily's argument, standardized education within a professional field lends a level of accountability and integrity to a field and a professional presence. We cannot afford to pass it up. So Emily points out some really interesting discussion questions in our article. Um, if the audiovisual field decides to move toward accreditation, would creating guidelines such as the SAAs be the first step in accomplishing this goal? Uh, how would certification be implemented in the audiovisual archiving profession? And would these programs meet the needs of audiovisual uh, And lastly, would these programs meet the needs of the audiovisual archival community? And this concludes the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.